Hi, welcome to another edition of A Word in Season. Proverbs 13, 12 says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. It is such a privilege for me to be able to share with you some encouragement from the Word of God. I trust that you have had a great week and that this season of your life has been significant and meaningful, regardless of your present circumstances. Today I would like to share with you about hope. When we consider what is going on in our world in a bigger scale, it is so easy to think that some of these situations are looking seemingly hopeless. Most people feel like there is nothing we can do about it other than pray to the Lord and ask for His peace to reign and for Him to intervene. In our text, what did Solomon mean when he said hope deferred? When something is deferred, it means it is being put off or put on hold or delayed, dragged out or suspended. From our human experience, the longer we see hope not being realized, the more likely we become discouraged. On the other hand, seeing some of our hopes come to pass is an uplifting and inspiring and encouraging experience. However, there are plenty of passages in the Bible where the people of God plead to God, asking God to answer their prayers. No one likes waiting. It feels good to get what we want, but when our expectations are delayed for a long time, we can experience disappointment, discouragement, disillusionment, and loss of hope. In some cases, prolonged waiting for what we eagerly desire can become such a painful time for us that it differs little from a lingering sickness. This scenario is exactly what Solomon mean when he said, hope deferred makes the heart sick. The word heart in the passage embodies not only the mental or emotional core, but the whole inward person. If, if something makes the heart sick, it causes despair and affliction. The Good News translation renders the verse like this. When hope is crushed, the heart is crushed. Hope deferred can lead to depression, anxiety, and actual sickness that manifests itself in our physical bodies. When we wait for a good thing for so long that the desire and expectation turn to hopelessness, we can become spiritually dried up and vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. When our hope is dashed, it makes our hearts sick, and the higher the expectations, the greater the frustration. The second part of this verse provides an antithesis of hope deferred. It says, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. The tree of life that Solomon is talking about in this text represents a renewed life in God. When our hopes and desires are fulfilled in the Lord, we are renewed and refreshed. When our prayers are answered, we are lifted up, built up and encouraged from within. When we receive the good thing that God promised, we go through a process of being revived in our inner being. Psalm 84 verse 11 is a beautiful promise. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does He withhold from those whose walk is blameless. As followers of Jesus, our hope is grounded in Him. It is sure and it is secure. It is not something that is hyped up optimism. While getting what we desire can be a good thing, we must not allow the pursuit of happiness and fulfillment to become a temptation to sin. Waiting can be an opportunity that could lead us to trust God and allow Him to work in our hearts and strengthen our character. We ought to see these long periods of waiting as opportunities to turn to God and depend on Him in our weakness. Our unfulfilled desires and deferred hopes can lead us to rich encounters with our Savior. Lamentations 3, 25-26 says, The Lord is good to those whose hope is in Him, to the one who seeks Him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Paul 
reaffirm this in Romans 5 verse 5. It says, And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. When we place our hope in Christ alone, we will not be disappointed, for we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure, as Hebrews 6.19 says. So the question I have for you is this, where do you put your hope in? I trust that this has been an encouragement to you today. Thank you so much for watching and God bless you.